Welcome to the next recliner chair presentation. Okay, today we're doing forces and the laws of motion. We're doing Newton's first law. Okay, 1630, Galileo, the same guy who dropped the two balls off the leaning tower of Pisa. Okay, he came up with the idea that objects try to maintain its state of motion. So if it's standing still, it tries to sit still. If it's moving, it wants to continue moving. The idea was expanded on by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687 with his first law of motion. And it states, an object at rest remains at rest. An object in motion continues in motion with constant velocity, constant speed in a straight line, unless the object experiences a net external force. The tendency of an object not to speed up or slow down, not to accelerate, is inertia. And because of this, the first law of motion is also known as the law of inertia. So when the net external force on an object is zero, its acceleration or change in velocity is also zero. So when we say net external force, what does that mean? Okay, the total force resulting from a combination of external forces. Sometimes we call it the resultant force. And we will calculate it later like a vector. We'll break it down into X and Y components. We'll use Pythagorean's theorem and we'll be able to find the force and the angle. We'll get to that later. Don't panic yet. So acceleration is determined by the net external force. Okay, back to our car. Here we have the car is moving. It's moving forward. There is the force of gravity pulling down. But we're going to find out that there's also an opposite but equal in our next, in our next lecture. So there is a normal force of the ground on the car. So gravity pulls down, the pavement pushes up. Okay. The tires are moving. Okay. It's pushing against the ground. So there is a backwards force that propels the car forward. So that causes the car to go forward. But there is friction. The ground and the tires, there is a friction force, and that is the resistance force. So we have this force, we have the normal force, we have the force forward, and the resistant force. Also, tug of war. Okay, think about forces. If as long as both forces are equal on both sides, the flag's not going anywhere. But let's say suddenly there was a greater force. Somebody comes along and hops on this side. There is a greater force this way than pulling this way, so the flag will go towards the right. It's the same, it's forces. That's all it is. So, equal force, there's no movement. If one force is greater than the other, there is movement and acceleration. Inertia. Mass can be considered a measurement of inertia. Larger masses must overcome more inertia than small masses. Okay? A garbage truck versus a little smart car. Okay? The big trash truck, it's got a lot more mass. In order to get it to move, it has more inertia and it takes more force. The little smart car, less mass, takes less force to get it moving. Same idea, okay? Takes a lot more force to change the direction or to get an elephant moving compared to a mouse, and it's based on mass. Okay, when well, I keep saying equilibrium before, what is equilibrium? 
It's the state in which there's no change in the body's motion. Okay. If it's moving, it stays moving. If it's, if it's stationary, it stays stationary because the net external forces equal zero. There's no change in whatever it's doing. Okay, that is the last slide. These are relatively short. So get these copied into your journal, take a picture, and send them to me. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Newton's second and third laws. And then after that, we'll be able to pull this all together, and we will do an exercise on applying Newton's laws. Okay, thanks a lot, guys.